ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد in need of praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him as he deserves to be praised and we ask for his aid and his assistance and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our wicked actions and from the evil of our wicked souls whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides then none can misguide and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides then none can guide I testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger the title of my lecture today insha'Allah ta'ala will be a tabarruj displaying one's beauty and adornments and the various forms of a tabarruj the first thing that the sisters need to understand is the meaning of the word at tabarruj what does at tabarruj mean because we have to know what it means in order to stay away from it and a sheikh abdul malik habidhullah ta'ala he said at tabarruj fi ma'anahu al lughawi huwa at tazayyin wa at كما قال الفيروز بادي رحمه الله في بصائر ذوي التمييز in the arabic language at tabarruj is to display one's beauty and adornments and to go beyond the acceptable limits as mentioned by الفيروز بادي in the book بصائر ذوي التمييز And he used as a proof وَاسْتَدَلَّ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى The saying of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah An-Nur غَيْرَ مُتَبَرِّجَاتِ بِزِينَ In such a way as to not display the adornment. So this is the linguistical definition of التبرج. ومعلوم أن هذه الآية this verse جاءت في المرأة العجوز it is well known that this verse was revealed concerning the old woman فإذا كانت العجوز منهية عن التبرج بالزينة فكيف يكون حال المرأة الشابة so if the old woman is forbidden from displaying her beauty and adornments then what about the young woman what about the woman that is young ففي هذا ابلغ زاجر لا عن ابراز محاسنها this alone should be a powerful deterrent that should prevent the woman from displaying her charms and her beauty to strangers وقد نقل البخاري في صحيحه عن معمر انه قال الامام البخاري رحمه الله he mentions in his authentic collection upon معمر that he said defining a tabarruj Ma'amar he said at tabarruj and tukhrija mahasinaha tabarruj 
is when a woman exposes her charms and beauty. So therefore, sisters, إِذَنْ فَالْأَصَلْ فِي الْمَرْأَةِ أَنْ تُخْفِي زِينَتَهَا عَنْ أَعْيُنِ النَّاسِ The origin for the woman is that she conceals her adornments, her beauty from the eyes of the people. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى as Allah the Most High, He said, وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِينَ And let them not stamp their feet so as to reveal what they hide of their adornment. وَلِذَلِكَ قَالَ الشَّيْخِ بِنُ بَازُ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهِ And that is why Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala he said as is found in his majmu' al-fatawa he said was zinatul al-manhiyu an ibda'iha defining a zina adornment beauty what does this mean? what is this referring to? As Sheikh Ibn Ubaz, he said, as zina, adornment or beauty that is forbidden to be displayed, ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu rajul min al mar'ati wa yad'uhu lin nadari ilayha. As zina is a comprehensive term. That is used to describe everything. That a man loves from a woman and calls him to look at her. So, as zina, the adornment that Allah has prohibited the woman from displaying to strangers, Ibn Bazi said, is a comprehensive term that is used to describe everything that a man loves from a woman. And calls him to look at her. سواء في ذلك الزينة الأصلية أو المكتسبة التي هي كل شيء تحدثه في بدنها تجملا وتزينا. Ibn Bazi said, whether it is her natural beauty or something extra that she adds to her body. Of clothing as beautification or adornment. This is the meaning of a zina. And it is clear from the definition of a Sheikh Ibn Baz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that many women are exposing that zina that Allah Azawajal has commanded them to conceal. وَمِمَّا وَرَدَ فِي تَرْهِيبَ النِّسَا مِنَ التَّبَرُّجَ الْآتِ Sisters, I ask you the question. Why is tabarruj so dangerous? Why is tabarruj displaying one's beauty and adornment so dangerous? Why is it so serious? The answer to that question is in the following. Insha'Allah ta'ala. And this is something that the sisters should pay attention to. So that they can enjoy the good and forbid the evil. So that they can educate their sisters about this matter of a tabarruj. Firstly, a tabarruj sunnatun jahiliyyah. At tabarruj displaying what Allah Azawajal has commanded the woman to conceal and to hide from strangers is a pre-Islamic practice from the days of ignorance. At tabarruj sunnatun jahiliya. At tabarruj is a pre-Islamic practice from the time 
of ignorance before the sending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala Allah ta'ala Allah the Most High He said وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى And do not display yourselves like they would do at the time of ignorance, the pre-Islamic era. فَكَيْفَ تَرْدَ الْمُسْلِمَ أَن تُنْسَبْ إِلَى الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ وَقَدْ اِخْتَارَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدِ صلى الله عليه وسلم التي قال فيها ربنا عز وجل كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس So how can the Muslim woman be happy to be associated with this period of ignorance and Allah has chosen her from the nation of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that nation about which Allah said you are the best nation to have arisen from mankind. So at Tabarruj sisters, at Tabarruj is sunnatun jahiliya. May Allah protect each and every one of you from that. Secondly, at Tabarruj, is a serious matter to the extent جَعَلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَرْكُ التَّبَرُّجْ شَرْطًا فِي بَيْعَةِ النِّسَاء that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he made the abandonment of a tabarruj displaying one's beauty displaying one's adornment displaying one's charms the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he made the abandonment of a tabarruj a condition a condition for the woman's pledge of allegiance. So when the women would come to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to offer the pledge of allegiance, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would accept the pledge of allegiance. But one of the conditions for that was that the woman had to abandon the practice of a tabarruj. Fan Abdullah ibn Amr. رضي الله تعالى عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عن he said جاءت أميمة بنت رقيقة إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so عبد الله بن عمر he said جاءت أميمة بنت رقيقة إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that أميمة the daughter of رقيقة she came to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم تبايعه على الإسلام to offer the pledge of allegiance upon Islam فقال So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Ubayi'uki ala an la tushriki billahi shay'a wa la tasriki wa la tazni wa la taqti wa la diki The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said I accept the pledge of allegiance based upon that you will not associate anything with Allah nor will you steal. Nor will you commit fornication. Nor will you kill your offspring. Nor will you utter slander intentionally. Inventing falsehood. And you should not wail over the dead. وَلَا تَبَرُّجِي تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى And the Prophet ﷺ he said, and you should not display yourself as they did in the pre-Islamic time of ignorance. And this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad, who are Hassan, and it is sound. Thalithan, a tabarruj is dangerous. 
التبرج is a matter to be taken seriously التبرج has evil consequences التبرج is something that is warned against in الإسلام التبرج مقرون بالشرك والزنا والسرقة وغيرها من الكبائر كما في الحديث السابق عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم because التبرج has been mentioned along with the shirk polytheism along with zina fornication along with stealing and other than them from the major sins as was found in the previous hadith At-tabarruj Sisters Rabi'an Kabiratun min kabairi al-dhunub Bidalili thalathati umur At-tabarruj is a major sin From the major sins And this is established In one of three ways At-tabarruj Displaying One's beauty Displaying Adornments Displaying One's charms Kabiratun min kabairi dhunub is a major sin from the major sins. And this is established in three ways. Al-awwal, the first, wurud al-wa'id al-shadid fi haq al-mutabarrija. There is a severe threat that has been mentioned in the sunnah for the woman that is mutabarrija. That for the woman that falls into tabarruj. فَعَنْ فَضَالَةَ إِبْنُ عُبَيْدِ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنَّهُ قَالْ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said ثلاثة لا تسل عنهم Three people do not ask about them. Three people do not ask concerning them. رجلا فارق الجماعة وعصى إمامه ومات عاصيا A man who left the jama'ah The community And disobeyed his leader And died in his state وأمت أو عبد أبق فمات The female or the male slave Who ran away and died وَامْرَأَةٌ غَابَ عَنَا زَوْجُهَا قَدْ كَفَاهَا مُؤْنَةَ الدُّنْيَا فَتَبَرَّجَتْ بَعْدُهُ فَلَا تَسَلَ عَنْهُمْ And this is the shahid sisters. This is the portion of the hadith that is relevant to a tabarruj. When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said And the woman The woman whose husband is away and he left her with everything that she needs of the worldly provisions. And after this, she openly displays her beauty and adornments. فَلَا تَسَلْ عَنْهُمْ Do not ask about them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, May Allah Azza wa Jal protect our sisters from falling in to a tabarruj. And this hadith, is collected by Imam Ahmad who is Sahih and it is authentic. وَقَدْ شَرَحَ السَّاعَاتِ أَتَّبَرُجَ الْوَارِدِ فِي الْحَدِيثِ فَقَالْ فِي الْفَتْحِ الرَّبَّانِ One of the ulama of Islam they explained the meaning of At-Tabaruj when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said a woman whose husband is away and he left her with everything she needs of the worldly provisions. And after this, she openly displays her beauty. فَتَبَرَّجَتْ بَعْدَهُ One of the ulama, they said this means in Al-Fatha Al-Rabbani, أَظْهَرَتْ زِينَتَا وَمَا حَاسِنَهَا لِلْأَجَانِبِ She exposed her beauty and her adornments to strangers. She exposed her beauty and her adornment to strangers. Athani, the second proof to establish that tabarruj displaying that which Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded the woman to conceal of beauty and adornments. 
The second proof to establish that tabarruj is a major sin from the major sins in al-Islam. إخبار النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن المتبرجات من أهل النار وأنهن يؤخرن عن دخول الجنة is when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he informed us that the mutabarrijat the women that fall into a tabarruj that practice a tabarruj that they are from the inhabitants of the hellfire and that they will be delayed from entering paradise may Allah Azza protect you all from that may Allah protect you from being delayed from entering Jannah sisters this is no laughing matter this is no matter that should have you there sitting and gossiping to your neighbor. This statement that we will read from the Prophet wasallam is serious. Because the Prophet wasallam informed us in the hadith that we will read that the mutabarrijat, they are inhabitants of the hellfire and that they will be delayed from entering paradise. Subhanallah al -Azim. روى مسلم عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إما مسلم إن الصحيح he narrated that Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said سنفان من أهل النار لم أراهما there are two types of the people of the inhabitants of the hellfire that I never seen. There are two types of the people from the inhabitants of the hellfire that I never seen. A people possessing whips like the tail of an ox. يَضْرِبُونَ بِهَا النَّاسِ And they were using them to flog and beat the people. And the second group, sisters, pay attention. وَنِسَاءٌ كَاسِيَاتٌ عَارِيَاتٌ Women who are clothed yet naked, who are being climbed, The evil and make others inclined towards it. Their heads, Ruusohunna, Kas Nimatil Buchtel Maila, their heads are like the humps of the camel. Layad Hulnal Jenna, they will not enter paradise. Wala Yajid Nari Haha, and they will not smell its scent. وَإِنَّ رِيحَهَا لَيُوجَدْ مِنْ مَسِيرَةِ كَذَا وَكَذَا Although the fragrance of Jannah can be smelled from such and such a distance. Subhanallah al-Azim. Subhanallah al-Azim. This should make the mutabarrija shake in her shoes. This should make the mutabarrija cry tears before it is too late. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, there will be women, kasiyat, ariyat, clothed, yet they are naked, mumilat, ma'ilat, inclined towards falsehood, towards evil, and inclining others towards it. Their heads are like the humps of the camel. Look what the Prophet ﷺ said about the mutabarijat. لا يدخلن الجنة they will not enter paradise ولا يجدن ريحها and they will not smell the fragrance of paradise سبحان الله العظيم وإن ريحها لا يوجد من مسيرة كذا وكذا and the fragrance of Jannah can be smelled from such and such a distance sisters this is serious والله this is serious And we mention this because we want good for our sisters. We mention this because we do not want our sisters 
to fall into a tabarruj. We mention this because we do not want our sisters to fall into a tabarruj. Because many people are walking around and they are clothed but they are naked. Athalith, the third hadith that establishes that a tabarruj is a major sin in al Islam. A tabarruj mujib li la'an wal iyadu billah. A tabarruj displaying one's beauty and adornments is a reason to be cursed. Wal iyadu billah and Allah's refuge is sought. Sisters, a tabarruj is a reason to be cursed. And Allah's refuge is sought from that. And this description is not applied and not said except to someone who commits a major sin. What is the proof, sisters, that a tabaruj is a reason to be cursed? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr, رضي الله تعالى عنه يقول سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said سيكون في آخر أمتي رجالا يركبون على سروج كأشباه الرحال The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Towards the latter part of my nation there will be men that ride on seats that resemble saddles and some of the ulama of Islam, they say this is referring to the car. Yes, the car. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, There will be in the latter part of my nation men that ride upon seats that resemble saddles. And this was mentioned by Shaykh al Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, and others. That this is referring to the automobile, it's referring to the car. ينزلون على أبواب المساجد. The Prophet ﷺ he said they will descend at the doors of the masjid. How many of us in our time see this? Cars pulling up to the masjid, people getting out of the car to go to the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ he said نساؤهم كاسيات عاريات. They women. Their women are clothed but naked. Their women are clothed but naked. These men are descending at the doors of the masjid. Their women are clothed but they are naked. Ara ru'usihim ka'asnimatil bukht al-ijaf. The Prophet said, he said, on their heads, is what appears to be like the humps of camels. Look what the Prophet ﷺ said about them. Curse them because they are cursed. The Prophet ﷺ said about the mutabarrijat. Curse them because they are cursed. And this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad. And it is authentic. Sisters, the ulama of Islam, they mention وَقَدْ اجْتَمَعَ فِي التَّبَرُّجَ اللَّعَنِ وَمَنْعُ الْجَنَّةِ كَمَا فِي هَذَيْنَ الْحَدِيثَيْنِ So we see as a result of a tabarruj, as a result of a tabarruj, one of the consequences is a curse and also a threat from being prevented from entering paradise for a tabarruj as is established in these two hadith. وَلِذَٰلِكَ عَدَّ الْقَاضِ عِيَادُ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ التَّبَرُّجْ مِنْ الْكَبَائِرِ فِي كِتَابِ الْمُعْلِمِ The Sharh of Sahih Muslim. وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانِ And that is why Al-Qadi Iyad He considered and he mentioned Al-Tabarruj to be from the major sins as we find in his book Al-Mu'lim The Explanation of Sahih Muslim.
sisters, I want to read to you a piece of golden advice from a Sheikh Al Alam Al Faqih, Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala. And the Sheikh, he is explaining the hadith. When the Prophet Sallallahu said there will be women, they are clothed but they are naked. He said, Hadi sifatu nisai ahli nar. These are the attributes of the women of the hellfire. Kasiyat ariyat. They are clothed, yet they are naked. Alayhin na kiswa, yani, alayhin na kiswa tun la tu feed wala tastur. This means that they were wearing garments, but their garments are not beneficial for their purpose. They do not conceal their bodies as they have been commanded, and they are not concealing due to their shortness, transparency, and tightness. Due to their shortness, their transparency, or their tightness. The Shaykh he said, Ma ilat mumilat, ma ilat an il haq wa an sirat al mustaqim. They have turned from the truth and the straight path. Mumilat de gayrihinna. And they incite others also to do likewise. وَذَلِكَ بِسَبَبِ مَا يَفْعَلْنَهُ مِنَ الْمَلَابِسِ وَالْهَيْآتِ الْفَاتِنَةِ الَّتِي ظَلَّتْ بِهَا نَفْسُهَا وَأَظَلَّتْ غَيْرَهَا The Shaykh, he said, Ibn Uthaymi, رحمه الله, and this is due to the clothing that they wear and the seductive appearances and behavior which caused the woman, this woman, to stray and caused others to as well. The Shaykh, he said, Ibn Uthaymi, رحمه الله, أيها المسلمون أو مسلمز أيها المؤمنون بالله ورسوله أو believers in Allah and his messenger أيها المصدقون بما أخبر به محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أو you who affirm and believe everything that the Prophet ﷺ informs us of أيها القابلون لنصيحته أو you who will accept the advice of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم لقد أخبركم الناصح الأمين بصفة لباس أهل النار من النساء لأجل أن تحذروا من هذا اللباس وتمنعوا منه نساءكم. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he is the trustworthy advisor. He informed you about the clothing of the women of the hellfire. So that you may be cautious and wary of it. And so that you may prevent your women from wearing it. هَلْ يَجِدُونَ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْمَخْلُوقِينَ أَنْصَحْ لَكُمْ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Do you find anyone from the creation more sincere in advice than the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم? هَلْ تَجِدُونَ هَدْيًا أَكْمَلْ مِنْ هَدْيِهِ Do you find guidance more complete and perfect than the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kalla wallahi, no, you will never find it. You will never find it. Why? Wala tajiduna dalika abada. Wa inna kulla mu'minin billahi wa rasooli. Indeed, every believer in Allah and his messenger, they know for certain. Anhu la ahad atammu nushan. ولا أكمل هديا ولا أحسن طريقا من محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. They know for surety that no one is more sincere in their advice. No one is better in terms of their guidance, and no one is better in terms of their path than محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. ولكن الغفل والتقليد الأعمى أوجب أن نقع فيما وقعنا فيه. But the problem is heedlessness. And blind following has caused us to fall into what we have fallen into. Ayyuhan nas. The Shaykh he said, Oh people, Inna hadhi al-albisati al-qasira. Indeed, Inna hadhi al-albisati al-qasira al-lati. Those short garments, those short skirts that your daughters are wearing. And you approve of them. 
Maybe you dress them with that clothing. Laysat wallahi ba Allah, that clothing is not good for them. Bal hiya sharrun lahun. That clothing will bring nothing but evil to them. Those short skirts. Tudib al haya anhunna. They strip your daughters of their modesty. And they expose them to fitna. And they cause them to boycott and abandon the legislated garments and covering, the garments of decency, the garments of modesty, the garments of the rightly guided predecessors. The Shaykh he said, Inna nushahid banatin fi thamina min al umar. He said, We see young girls, maybe eight years of age, are a bit older, and they wear short skirts. And the skirt, it reaches the middle of the thigh. And she has trousers like tights. And you can see al qarib al qarib It's close to revealing the private parts. Subhanallah, the Sheikh is talking about those people that dress their daughters in this fashion. He said, Mal fa'ida min hadha? What's the benefit of this dress to society? Will this dress... Will it rectify the quality of the characteristics of those in the society? Will it perfect the iman of the society? Will it bring any rectification? Will it improve their health? He said, no, it will not do any of this. He said, walakin fi al-mafasid. There are many evils that come from dressing your daughters in these type of dresses. It will eradicate modesty. And it will get them accustomed to wearing these types of dresses when they become old, as we see. Because these dresses, these garments, they even is not something that is specific to the young. Rather now, it is starting to affect the young women who are at the age of marriage. As sometimes you see when the wind it blows the abaha. You see them wearing these short skirts. Ayyuhal Muslimun. O Muslims. Inna al-wajib al-deeni wal It is a religious obligation and a moral obligation. It makes it binding upon us that we bring an end to this un-Islamic clothing. Wattanahi anha. We forbid them. And that we safeguard our women from a tabarruj. And likewise, we should be protectors over our women as Allah has praised us as protectors over our women. Sisters, that was the muqaddima, the introduction. Defining a tabarruj. Defining a tabarruj. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to move on to discuss specific examples, forms of a tabarruj. May Allah Azza protect all of you from a tabarruj. And sisters, you need to pay attention so that you can advise one another. Allah Azza said in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wal Asr. By time, Inna al insan la fi khusr. The whole of mankind is in a state of loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous deeds. وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And they advise one another concerning the truth. And they advise one another to be patient. The companions when they met one another, they would not depart until they had recited Asr. We advise one another. If we see someone is doing something openly, if they're openly falling into tabarruj, it's blatant, it's not something hidden, then we advise one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبَعْدَ التَّعْرِيفِ التَّبَرُّجْ التَّعْرِيفِ العام يَبِينَ التَّبَرُّجْ فِي السُورِ الْخَاصِ الْآتِيَةِ After we have offered and given a general definition and description of a tabarruj, 
it should be obvious and evident that the following are specific examples of a tabarruj. Sisters, the reason why we are mentioning this is so that we can learn, so that we can benefit, so that we can implement the truth in our lives, so that we can dress as Allah Azza wa has commanded us to dress, so that we can stay away from things that anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first example of a tabarruj, min a tabarruj, Allah yakun al jilbab. It is a form of tabarruj if the jilbab does not cover and conceal the whole of the woman's body. It is a form of a tabarruj if the jilbab does not conceal and cover the whole of the woman's body for the third time. And I hope that your hearts are open as well as your ears because some people listen but they do not absorb it with their heart. One of the forms of a tabarruj is if the jilbab does not cover the whole of the woman's body. كَأَنْ يَنْزِلْ مِنَ الْكَتْفَيْنِ لَا مِنَ الرَّأْسِ Like if the jilbab, it came from the woman's shoulder. That is a form of tabarruj. If the jilbab, it comes from the shoulder, that is a form of tabarruj. Again, if the jilbab, it comes from the shoulder and not from the head, that is a form of tabarruj. Why is it tabarruj? لِأَنَّهُمْ مُخَالِفٌ لِكَلِمَةِ عَلَىٰ أَدَّالَ عَلَىٰ عُلُوِ الشَّيْءَ الْوَارِدَ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَىٰ because if the jilbab comes from the shoulder, then it contradicts the word Allah. Allah means that something should start from the highest point that we find in the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, Yudnina alayhinna min jalabibihinna. And the women, they should draw their cloaks over their whole body. Alayhinna. So Allah here means that the jilbab, it should come from the highest point of the woman. The highest point of the woman is the head. The shoulders of the woman is not the highest point of the woman. That is why when the woman she wears the jilbab from the shoulders it will reveal the shape of the body baynama al jilbab shar'i whereas the legislated jilbab that starts from the head yamna tafsil al jism min ra'siha ila sadriha wa ma nazal it will conceal all of a body from the head to the chest and that which is below it because it has come from the head. So sisters, those who are wearing the jilbab from the shoulder, what is known as the shoulder abaa, then this is a form of tabarruj. And this is an opposition to the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yudnina alayhinna min jalabibihinna. That they should draw their cloaks all over their body from the top of their body because Allah means that it starts from the highest point. I hope that is as clear as the sun in the sky because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Taraktukum alal bayda. I've left you upon clear guidance. Its night is like its day. لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك No one deviates from it except that they are destroyed. Sisters, it's time. It is time. It is time that you understand the meaning of a tabarruj. That you advise those individuals that are falling into a tabarruj. That we learn and we teach our children the meaning of a tabarruj. The second type of a tabarruj. 
ومن التبرج أن يكون الجلباب قطعتين It is a form of tabarruj if the jilbab comprises of two separate pieces. A piece that covers the top of the body and a piece that covers the bottom of the body. Like somebody wearing a long skirt and a shirt and covering a hair. That is tabarruj. That is tabarruj. And the Sheikh mentioned, وَهَذَا مُخَالِفْ لِمَا نَقَلْنَاهُ عَنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ مِنْ أَنَّ الْجِلْبَابِ قِطْعَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ تَشْمَلُ الْجِسْمِ كُلَّهُمْ Because this is in contradiction to what we have mentioned from the scholars of Islam that the jilbab is one piece that covers the whole body. And the Sheikh said, وَالْحِكْمَةِ The wisdom behind preventing this type of garment is to prevent people from playing with this noble dress and we see this wisdom becoming clearly evident in the latter decades because when it was said to the women that there is no specific dress that you have to wear but the most important thing is that you cover your body everyone understood this how they wanted to understand it and that is why various types of what they refer to as jilbab have appeared some of them wear jeans and a scarf and they say that's jilbab some of them have something covering their hair and the shoulder abaha and parts of their hair out and they say that's jilbab The third type of a tabarruj and the brother, he covered this in the lecture previously. But inshallah ta'ala, the reminder benefits the believer. And the Prophet sallam, when he was teaching his companions, sometimes he would repeat something. He would repeat a specific point so that it could be understood clearly. ومن التبرج أن يكون الجلباب زينة في نفسه. It is a form of تبرج. If the jilbab is considered to be zina, beauty, and an adornment in itself, it is تبرج. نعم. Those people that are wearing fish stockings for people to see, that is تبرج. Those people that are wearing diamonds and rhinestones upon their overgarments that is tabarruj those people that have ruffles they have the audacity to have ruffles on the back of their overgarment like they're going to a ball that is tabarruj that is tabarruj your sisters al hikma min tashri' the wisdom behind the jilba being legislated is for the woman to cover her beauty and her adornment from the men who are strangers. As Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ And the believing women, they should not expose and reveal their adornment and their beauty. As we said earlier, whether this is their natural beauty or whether this is something extra like jewelry or something that they put upon their clothing. إِلَىٰ آخِرِهِ ومن العجائب and it is amazing it is amazing amazing أن النساء يعلمن هذا some of the women the women they know this they know that the jilbab should not be should not be a source of beauty the jilbab they know it should not be an adornment in itself however they intentionally wear the jilbab that has been decorated with embroidery that will attract the attention of men. It is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. A 
it is absolutely amazing وَرُبَّمَا جَعَلَتْ إِحْدَاهُنَّ that maybe one of the women you find she wears a badge on a khimar she wears a badge on a khimar or she wears a flower upon a khimar on her head or she wears some type of jewelry on her head over the jilbab and the shaykh he said be alone in mumayyaz some of them they wear different colors whether it's a ribbon or a flower or whether it's a badge on top of the jilbab on their head like the comb of a, of a rooster like the comb of the rooster وَهَذَ مِنَ الْعَجَائِبِ This is from the strange affairs by Allah. وَيَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ هَذِ الْمُتَحَجِّبَةِ لَمْ تَفْهَمْ لِلْجِلْبَابِ مَعْنَىٰ And this shows that the woman who wears these type of things, the woman who wears these type of things, she does not understand the purpose of the jilbab. She does not understand the purpose of the jilbab. أو أنها متلاعبة بدينها أيما تلاعب أو that she's playing games with her religion والعياذ بالله and may Allah protect any of the sisters from falling into this مع أن الله أمر المرأة بالقرار في بيتها كي تكون أستر ما تكون أن أعين الناس even though Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded the woman to remain in her house so that she can be more concealed from the eyes of the men. As Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ And remain in your houses. فَعُلِمَ مِنْ هَذَا النص. It is understood from this clear text. أَنَّ الْمَرْأَ كُلَّمَا أَبْرَزَتْ زِينَتَهَا لِلْأَجَانِبِ That the more that the woman reveals her adornments and her beauty to strangers, then she is further from fulfilling the requirements of the jilbab and closer to tabarruj. وَأَقْرَبِ لَا تَبَرُّجْ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Sisters, it is tabarruj if the jilbab is itself a dormant. Stay away from those jilbabs that have Muslim written on the front of it. Stay away from those jilbabs that have niqabi written on the front of it. Stay away from those jilbabs that have embroidery all up and down the arm. Stay away from those jilbabs. The shoulder jilbabs. Stay far away from them. Because we do not want you to fall into tabarruj. And how many people are falling into tabarruj? I want to read something for you. It was mentioned by one of the scholars of the past, Al-Alusi rahimahullah in Ruh al-Ma'ani. He said, ثم أعلم نو أن عندي مما يلحق بزينة المنهي عنها ثم أعلم أن عندي مما يلحق بزينة المنهي عنها إبداؤها He said, and know that I hold that likewise it is from a zina exposing one's beauty and adornments which the woman has been commanded to conceal that which is done and worn by many of the extravagant women of our time that they wear above their overgarments and they use these things as coverings when they leave the house and he said and I am referring to the covering that is made of silk it is made of silk min haririn dhi iddati alwan and it comprises of many colors and it contains gold and silver materials and fabrics and look what the Shaykh he said about the husbands. He said, وَأَرَى and I believe أَنَّ التَّمْكِينَ أَزْوَاجِهِنَّ That if their husbands allow them to wear these garments and the like of these garments when they leave the house and allow them to walk around among strangers like this then this is due to him lacking jealousy for his wife. This is due to him lacking jealousy. مِنْ قِلَّةِ الْغَيْرَةِ the Shaykh, he said, I believe that if the husband or the men in charge of the women allow their, their wives or their daughters or those under their authority 
to leave the house and walk around among strangers like this. He said, then this is from Qillatil Haya or Qillatil Ghayra because of lack of their jealousy for their women. وَقَدْ عَمَّتِ الْبَلْوَ بِذَلِكِ Likewise, وَمِنَ التَّبَرُّجَ أَنْ يَكُونْ لِبَاسُهَا الشَّفَّافًا It is a form of tabarruj. If the overgarment, if the garment of the woman is transparent and thin, this is a form of a tabarruj. As mentioned by Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, when he said, وَأَمَّ الشَّفَّافِ as for that overgarment which is transparent or thin, فَإِنَّهُ يَزِيدَ الْمَرْأَةَ فِتْنَةً وَزِينَةً Then it does nothing except increase the woman in her fitna and in her beauty. وَفِي ذَلِكَ يَقُولُ And the Prophet ﷺ, he said about this, يَكُونُ فِي آخِرِ أُمَّتِي Towards the latter part of my ummah, there will be women who are clothed, yet they are naked. عَرَى رُؤُوسِيِنَّا and their heads appear to be like the humps of the camel. Curse them. Because they are cursed. Ibn Abdul Bar he said, explaining this hadith. He said the Prophet ﷺ intended by this. The women that wear thin clothing, which describes their body and does not conceal it. So apparently they are clothed, but in reality they are naked. So they have what you would call clothing upon their body. But in reality, Islamically, they are naked. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, وَقَدْ فُسِرَ قَوْلُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ كَاسِيَاتْ عَارِيَاتِ بِأَنْ تَكْتَسِي مَا لَا يَسْتُرُهَا فَهِيَ كَاسِيَا he said that when the Prophet said clothed yet naked that they are wearing a type of clothing but it does not conceal them so in reality they are naked and then Shaykh al-Islam gave an example of what is considered to be clothed yet naked like those people that wear belts around their waist they are clothed but they are naked and they make those belts expose the shape of their body. They are clothed, yet they are naked. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, given an example about the garments, that if the women were to wear them, they would be considered to be clothed, yet naked. He said, وَإِنَّمَا كِسْوَةُ الْمَرْأَ مَا يَسْتُرُهَا فَلَا يُبْدِي جِسْمَهَا وَلَا حَجْمَ أَعْضَائِهَا لِكَوْنِهِ كَثِيثًا وَاسِعًا He said, the garment that the women should wear is that which conceals her body. And it should not describe the shape of her limbs. It should not describe the shape of her limbs and it should not expose her body because it is thick and it is spacious and wide. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, it should not be a thobat dayyik, that thin garment, asif, that garment that is tight, that exposes taqati khalqiha, that exposes the crevices and the joints of the creation of the woman, like he said, exposing her buttocks or a forearm or that which is like this. So when you wear the shoulder jilbab, like a Sheikh Al Fawza mentions, you have sleeves like a thob. So you're exposing the shape of your forearm, your side. You're exposing the shape of your chest, the size of your chest. وَمِمَّا يَدُلُّ عَلَى مَا نَحْنُ بِسَدَدِهِ مَا رَوَاهُ مَالِكُ وَبِنُ سَعَدْ أَنْ أُمِّ عَلْقَمَ And this is further emphasized, meaning that the garment should not be thin and transparent and that this is a form of a tabarruj, if the garment fits this description, is that which was narrated by Malik and Ibn Sa'd upon Umm al qama She said, رَأَيْتُ حَفْسَ بِنْتْ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَانِ بْنَ أَبِي بَكَرْ دَخَلَتْ عَلَى عَائِشَةِ وَعَلَيْهَا خِمَارِ I saw Hafsa, the daughter of Abd Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, and she entered upon Aisha, and she was wearing a khimar. But the khimar, it was thin, and you could see her forehead. فَشَقَّتْهُ عَائِشَ عَلَيْهَا وَقَالَتْ 
Aisha, she took it from her and she ripped it up. Where are the Aishas amongst the sisters? Where are the Aishas amongst the sisters that advise the sisters when they see them falling into Tabaruj? Aisha, she never just stopped advising the sisters about Tabaruj. She said, أَمَا تَعْلَمِينَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فِي سُورَةِ النُّورِ ثُمَّ دَعَتْ بِخِمَارٍ Aisha, she said, do you not know what Allah has revealed in Surah An-Nur? Revealed in Surah An-Nur about what? About the overgarment of the woman. Then what did she do? She taught her, look at this tariqah of da'wah. She told her, firstly, the garment that you are wearing, it's thin. This is not the overgarment that the woman has been commanded to wear. Secondly, she took it from her and she tore it. She said, do you not know what Allah has revealed in Surah An-Nur? Educating her, teaching her what is the le legislated hijab. Then she called for a khimar and she dressed her. This is the etiquette that we have with one another. So when the sisters see someone falling into tabaruj, don't just shout at them. Don't rip the scar from their head. Don't stare at them. Go to them. Sister, I love you for the sake of Allah. Remind them about the ahadith of a tabaruj. Curse them because they are cursed. Say to them, sister, I don't want you to be cursed. But right now you're falling into tabaruj. Like the Sheikh, he said, I don't want to f see you falling into tabaruj, but no doubt with rifq, with gentleness and kindness and words that the person would accept it from you. Right now we're in a lecture and we're explaining the gravity of this matter. But when you approach a person with gentleness and kindness and show them that you care, not just to reprimand. Look, Aisha, she called for a khimar and she said, here, take this. And she gave her a khimar, the correct Islamic dress. So not only did she enjoin the good and forbid the evil, she taught her what was correct, and then she gave her the garment. That's sisterhood. Not that we, we see people walking around us and we know that they're out of pocket. We know that she's mutabarrija. We just look and shake our head and we start sucking our teeth. Or we go home and we start talking about the sister. That's incorrect. There are many points that the sheikh he brings. I'll just finish with this last point so that we can pray. The next point... <clears throat> With regards to a tabarruj, and I'll choose this inshallah ta'ala because I'll have to skip a few, and alhamdulillah Abul Hassan he covered them in his talk anyway, and maybe on a later date we can continue. Women at tabarruj, there is a form of, it is a form of tabarruj and yushbihu, libasul mar'ati libasul rajul. It is a form of tabarruj if the garments that are worn by the woman resemble the garments that are worn by the men. Can talbis al mar'a, like if the woman was to wear that which we know is a short jacket, like a jean jacket. And then she pulls that jean jacket tight and everything is exposed. Like that which is known as the jean jacket. Or going out in a pair of trousers. Or a pair of denim jeans and just covering your hair. Like the hair was the only thing that was to be covered. We already defined what a tabarruj is and what a zina is. Look, sisters, what the Prophet wasallam, his attitude towards those women who imitated the men. In the hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, قال لعن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الرجل يلبس لبسة المرأة والمرأة تلبس لبسة الرجل. The Prophet ﷺ, he cursed the man who wears the garment or the clothing of the woman and the woman that wears the clothing of the man. And this is collected by Abu Dawood and authenticated by Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. I just want to close with one point. Let us go back because we follow the Salaf. We follow the Salaf. And let us give an example of the understanding of the Salaf to this matter. We see that the Salaf, they understood the danger of women imitating men. To the extent that they will prohibit the women from wearing the shoes that were worn by the men. As we have upon Ibn Abi Mulaika who said, Qila li Aisha, it was said to Aisha, there is a woman and she is wearing a nal. She is wearing the shoes that are worn by men. Aisha, she said, La'ana Rasulullah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he cursed the woman that imitates the men. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he cursed the woman that imitates the man. 
Look at the understanding of the faqih of al-Islam. Don't look at people in our time that are according to this feminist movement. Do not look to those people that say all they worry about is the woman's dress. However, our attitude and approach is that we are advising the women to dress as Allah Azza wa has commanded them. So look at the understanding of the faqih of al-Islam, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the faqih of an-nisa. And look how the ulama, after Aisha, they acted upon this fiqh. To the extent that you find the fuqah of al-Islam warning the women from imitating the men. And I'll give some narrations upon Imam Ahmad. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, was asked about a woman that is given men's shoes to wear. What did he say? He said, la, she should not wear them unless she's wearing them to make wudu. Then he was asked, what about if she's wearing them for beautification? He said, no. Then he was asked about a woman shaving her hair. Uh, Imam Ahmed, he said, no, la. Because shaving of the hair is specific to men, to the males. And not to the females. And this is found in the Masail of Imam Ahmed, Li Abi Dawud, rahimahullah. To the extent that Imam Al-Dahabi, rahimahullah, considered the women imitating the men to be from the major sins as we find in his book Al-Kaba'ir. So sisters, we advise you to stay away from this and all forms of a tabarraj. And as I said, there are other examples that we had to cut short. Specific examples of a tabarruj. We advise the sisters to stay far away from this.